Hi, my name's Zoe from Oodles of Craft and today I want to talk to you about control. Controlling your sewing machine is crucial, especially when you're beginning to learn. So today I'm going to talk you through how to control the speed, but also how to control the direction in which you're sewing. And I've got some skill sheets that I will link below for you to download and print. So in order to sew using a sewing machine, you are going to today keep your eye on this needle area here. Now the needle is there and it will move up and down, which will create your stitches underneath. Now we're not going to use any thread today and we're not gonna use any fabric. We're gonna save that for our gorgeous projects instead. Today we're gonna to use some of my control sheets, which I will link below. So, there are a couple of ways in which you can control your speed depending on the machine you have. I've put my foot pedal here so that you can see what's going on, but obviously this would be resting underneath your foot under your table. Now if I press my foot pedal down, the machine will start to sew. When I lift my foot pedal up, the needle will stop. So that's the basics of how your machine is going to work. But in terms of controlling speed, we need to think about two different things. So if, like me, you have a machine that has a sliding dial, which I highly recommend for children if you can get it, you have got a slow speed up to a racing fast speed. So if you have a look at my machine here, when I'm on the slow speed, when I push my foot all the way down, it goes super slow and it will remain that speed no matter how hard I press. If I were to slide up to about halfway and do the same again, you can see that it is faster than I would ever need to sew, let alone the absolute top speed. So this sliding dial is really good at preventing you from going too fast. So I always keep mine when I'm teaching on the slowest setting so that it doesn't matter how hard you push your foot pedal down. However, not every machine has one of these settings. So I'm gonna put mine on a high setting and show you how you would control it if you don't have that setting. So I'll tilt my foot pedal to the side so you can see what I'm doing. If I press down lightly on my foot pedal, I can still get the slow speed that I need to be safe to sew. If I press down a bit harder, it will take me faster. If I push it all the way down, I'm going bonkers fast again. Okay, so if your machine does not have this speed dial to keep you safe, then you just need to be aware of how hard you're pushing your foot pedal down. So nice and gentle will give you a slow setting. If you push harder, it will go faster. So bear that in mind when you are sewing. The skill sheets we're about to do will help you practice this before you get on to your proper projects. So here are the control sheets that I have designed for you to practice your skills before you start using fabric and thread itself. So the first sheet is about how to control the speed. I just want you to get used to sewing in a steady manner to make sure that you are doing the best you can when you are sewing. The next sheet will be all about where the edge of your fabric is in relation to your needle. So this is about practicing what we call seam allowance but I'll talk more about that in a moment. Then I've got a skill sheet where we're gonna practice going round corners, which is gonna be important for lots of different projects that you do. And the final skill sheet has some curves on there because those are one of the hardest to master. But if we practice it first, you'll get used to it. So let's make a start. So my foot pedal is back on the floor underneath my sewing table and I have put my sliding dial halfway up on the speed. Now this is because I want to show you 
how you would control it with your foot and I'll tell you what I'm doing with mine. However, if I were to just use my machine, I would keep it nice and slow and steady. So it's up to you based on what you have got. If you have one of these, then take it down to the turtle. That will give you all the control you need, but have a play with the different settings. And if you haven't got one of these, don't worry about it. You are gonna control it using your foot. So this first sheet is all about getting used to the speed of your sewing machine. So remember we said the harder you press your foot down, the faster your machine will go. If you feel out of control or you want to stop, please just lift your foot up. It will stop for you, no problem. So we are gonna to aim to get our needle down into the blue targets. We're going to try and sew in a straight line using different speeds and we will aim to stop in the red target at the bottom. So with this sheet here, I'm going to start with this blue dot. So I'm first of all going to position my piece of paper. I'm just going to fold that up slightly so that my needle is above the blue target. I then need to lower my presser foot. So generally speaking, I will say trap your fabric. Well, in this case, trap your paper in place. So number one, position your piece of paper. Number two, trap your piece of paper using your take up lever. I am now going to put my foot down on the pedal. And I am sewing. So gently rest your hands either side of the piece of paper or fabric and stop when you get to that red target okay when you're there make sure your needle is up lift and take your design out and you could just about see how accurate or not accurate your sewing potentially is now I'd like you to have a go a few times. So remember, position, trap, and sew. So if I rest my foot gently, I go slow. If I press harder, I go faster. And if I put it all the way down, it will be a lot faster. Speed is not necessarily a good thing when you're sewing, so I want you to practice being controlled. If you feel that it's going off track, then you need to gently nudge your paper either side. So let me show you how to do that. So position, trap. So if my line starts going off towards the side like this, and can you see, I zoom in slightly I'm definitely going off track so what I do in this case I don't really want to take my needle out what I would like to do is when I'm guiding it I'm just going to gently push it back this way to get me back on track and then straighten up so this is why we guide the fabric or the paper in this case with our hands either side. So as you can see, it started going off track. Hang on, there we go. But if you gently nudge your way back on track again, you'll be fine. So I would like you to take your first control skill sheet and practice the speed of your machine to get the setting that suits you best. Good luck. Okay, this control sheet is called down the track. Now when we're sewing, we don't generally have a nice line to follow unless we've drawn it on for ourselves. So what we're actually looking at when we're sewing down here, for example, we're actually looking at where the edge of the fabric is. So if, I pop this down, for example, to 
cover up the others. So imagine this is your lovely fabric. What we're going to do is sew down this channel just as you did before now that you've got used to your speed only this time we're keeping an eye on where this edge of the fabric that's what we're imagining this line to be where the edge of the fabric is compared to our presser foot so let me show you on my machine what I mean so I'm going to start on this side here so I'm going to position my needle so it starts in the blue target and I'm going to sew down towards the bottom until I reach my other target. So this is the line I am focusing on and I need to think where that is in comparison to my needle. So the distance between your needle and the edge of the fabric is called your seam allowance. And sometimes fabric companies will tell you how big they want that gap to be. So how big they want their seam allowance to be. So in this case, I don't want you to worry about the numbers but we are going to slide this underneath. So position your sheet and then trap the piece of paper. When looking at this a little closer up, you can see that there is now a gap between the edge of my presser foot and the line on the paper or the edge of the fabric as we're imagining it to be. So I've trapped my fabric in place or my paper in place. If I put my needle down so you can see where it is, you can see that I am on track to come down the center here, but it's this that I actually want to look at this time. I want to make sure that this tiny gap here, my seam allowance is always going to stay the same. So as before, I'm going to keep my fingers away from the needle itself, but I am going to be making sure that I guide it if I need to. So this time I'm going to gently rest my foot on my foot pedal. but I'm keeping my eye on that little gap at the side because that's what I want to make sure I keep. When you're done, lift it out and check how accurate your sewing is. Okay, keep going with the other tracks and see how you get on. For the third control sheet, we're going to learn how to pivot, which basically means how to turn round a corner without losing our space. So we are going to control our sewing so that we sew down here, through the track. When we get to about here, we are going to put our needle down, pivot, which means to spin, and we're going to sew down this way. Then we'll stop, needle down, pivot, and go up this way and so on and so on and so on until we reach our end target. Let me show you on your machine how that will look. So depending on your machine there are two potential ways you can put your needle up and down. So I'm going to keep an eye on my needle here to see what effect it has but if I press this button here on my electric machine you can see that it's got an up down arrow and it's got an image of what looks like a needle. So that is your needle up and down button. So if I press it once, my needle goes down. If my needle is down and I press it, it will go back up again. Okay, so when I press it and it's up, it will go down. If it's down and I press it, it will go up. There are lots of machines, however, that don't have this button. So let me show you what you would do in that case. So those of you that have a standard machine that you need to work it manually, remember our needle is here. What we need to do when we're putting our needle down is use our hand wheel to the right of your machine. So when I move this towards me, can you see my needle is going down? 
I keep turning it towards me, it will then go up. So always, always, always use your hand wheel going towards you. And that is effectively hand sewing using your machine. So wind it towards you to get it down. But if it's down and you need it back up, wind it towards you to get it back up again. So remember this time, we're starting in our blue target and we are making our way down this section here. But we want to stop when we reach about here and put our needle down. Okay, so let's do that together. Your machine will always sew towards you, so we need to put our sheet in sideways and trap it into position. So step number one is position, step number two is trap it. We're then going to sew, so I'm going to gently put my foot on my foot pedal. and stop when I think I've reached that section I wanted to stop on. So my needle is up at the moment. I'm gonna wind my hand wheel towards me to make that needle go down. Then I'm gonna use my lever. We're going to lift up, pivot, trap it, and go. So stop when you think you're in the right place, lower your needle by turning the hand wheel towards you, lift, pivot, trap it and go. When you get to the end, lower your needle. I think I could do one more stitch. So I'm gonna turn the dial towards me one more time. Then I'm going to lift, pivot, trap it, and sew. Keep doing this until you reach the end. So hopefully you have successfully made your way around the maze to the other end. Our final challenge is sewing a curve. Now I've done some gentle curves for you to practice, but there are also some sharper curves, especially in this corner here. So this time I don't want you to worry about seam allowance. I just want you to follow the line itself because I think when you're learning how to sew a curve, Having a line to follow first is better. Let's see how you get on. So I would recommend that you start on a straight line rather than the curve itself. This makes your life easier, gets you used to what you're doing. So I'm gonna go at the top of this shape and I'm just gonna start kind of halfway down. So I've positioned my piece of paper. I trap my piece of paper and then I can sew. Now when I'm at a gentle curve, I should be able to just ease my paper round. However, this first curve is quite a sharp corner, so I'm going to take it easy. And when I get to where I think I need to turn, I'm going to put my needle down by winding my wheel towards me or pressing the button if you've got one and then I'm lifting spinning it slightly and continuing I'm going to stop put my needle down I'm going to lift and pivot just make sure that you're always trapping it once you've finished needle down 
lift, pivot and carry on. Because I'm now on a gentle curve, I'm just going to gently nudge the paper over to the right. I'm keeping an eye on my needle. I want to make sure that it's on the black line. Gently pushing this round to help it. But I am now getting back to that sharp curve. So at the bottom, so I'm going to wind my wheel forwards, lift, pivot a little bit, a couple of stitches, needle down, lift, pivot, and I'm now virtually on the straight. So I'm aiming to get on that far point. When I get there, it's the same as your corner. Needle down, lift. This time I've got to go pivot all the way round to get back on track. It's quite a sharp corner, so I'm going to put my needle down, lift, pivot, and then I'm gonna nudge my way round this a uh, smoother curve. Needle down, lift, pivot. down, lift, pivot, remember it will always come towards you and then I need to get back to where I started sewing. And there you have it. So yours may or may not look like this the first time. There is another one there for you to practice afterwards, but try to follow the curves. If it's a sharp curve, make sure you put your needle down, lift and pivot. And if it's a smoother curve, then you should be able to just gently ease it round. Good luck. So there you have it. There are your four different skill sheets. I would highly recommend you do them before you use thread and fabric. Get used to the speed of your machine. Get used to the direction in which it can sew. Practice putting your needle down before you turn around a corner, so before you pivot, and also have a go at curves. You'll then have a better idea about which projects would be suitable for you to start off with. Please subscribe if you're interested in what I have to teach you um, and you're very welcome to join my free Facebook group which I will also link below. Have a good day, happy practicing.